Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Buddhist Travelog and I hope everybody is doing good. If you guys are new to my channel, in this channel I post content related to productivity, my life here in Canada and my university lifestyle as well. So let's jump right into the video. Concordia, this is the topic for today. To people who don't know, I am doing my master's in quality system engineering here at Concordia. I'm at my second year. First off, when I first got my admission into Concordia, you know, the first thing we do is we go to Google, we start picking up a lot of things about the university that we got into, right? That's what I did. I went into YouTube and you know, typed about campus tour. I typed on the details about how courses to look like at Concordia. I rarely find a little content, like little content. So I promised myself when I'm going to get into Concordia, I'm going to create content. Like when I am brave enough to create content, I'm, I'll definitely create content first on Concordia. Like the courses, exams, what can you expect from Concordia? So this video is my first initiative and this literally proves that I am courageous enough to start posting my videos. In this video, I'll be talking about six facts of Concordia. The first important thing is campus. Concordia has two major campus. One is a Loyola campus and at the other is a downtown campus. So the Loyola campus is located 20 to 30 minutes away from the downtown campus. So it's kind of hard for people to get accessibility and Concordia provide a bus facility to transport from one place to the other, like from one campus to the other campus. Coming to Loyola in particular, Loyola campus is the campus in itself, like the campus campus. How do I say it? Okay, Loyola is the green grassy campus that you guys all dreamt of and um, you have everything inside a compound your buildings and you have your court like the rugby court the basketball court and so on situated inside the campus whereas downtown campus is exactly the opposite it's the city school in itself downtown campus is not like a campus it's split everywhere on the roads especially at the center of downtown so we have major buildings at the Guy Street, the Maison Way, and the St. Catherine, the Bishop, one fine arts in Renalavik. So we are like split. So we don't definitely have a campus. The main campus have John Molson Business School, the Hall Building, the EV Building, the Guy Building, and Forbrook Campus. We have fine arts. We have Green and Residence and i've seen two of the buildings like literally apart from the downtown i truly don't know what those campuses are like i've never visited those campuses so these are the main campuses here at concordia especially in downtown i have like zero idea on loyola campus i'm so sorry about that guys if you're a person who thinks campus is so important for you then concordia is definitely not the place for you you can switch to other universities but if you are someone who's okay with the downtown life and the university life combined together concordia is especially the place for you but there is a positive perspective you know i'll tell you at the end of the video what it is now coming to talk about library so library is 24 7 access at concordia and it's a public library so anybody can come over to here they can study but they have certain limitations when you first come to the campus you'll be given id card you should make sure you always have the id card when you're in library so libraries are kind of not accessible to the public after 11 pm and only the concordia students have access and how do they check it yes the security come to every person and he checks the id card and if that person don't have id card they immediately have to evacuate from the library building so this is such a rule even if you're a concordian student you have to show the proof that you're a concordia student during summer 
as it's a holiday season. The library is from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So you cannot expect the library to be 24-7. Concordia has a huge underground world, I could say. So all are building like the library, the hall building and the John Wilson Business School and the EV building are all connected underground. The underground itself has the metro. So at the center point of all these things, we have a metro station and the metro goes one layer below the underground. Well, consider this is the basement one level and the basement two level is the metro station. So the basement one level actually has Tim Hortons in it and we have food, food stores and we have pizza shop, we have bakery like Coco Ban and more on. So I think we still have two to three more shops underground and at the bottom of EV building you can find a smoothie store and at the bottom of library you can find a Starbucks so when you come out of the building opposite to all the building you can find Tim Hortons Starbucks you have a lot of restaurants when you just step out of the campus like a small restaurants to a big cafe shop so everything is connected in Concordia, this is what you can expect in downtown Concordia. The second thing, I'm gonna talk everything from now on in master's perspective. So if you're an undergrad student or a student from fine arts, I'm truly not sure if this video could definitely suit you, but if you wanna get an overall idea, you can watch. But for master's students, especially into engineering, so this video is definitely for you now. From now on, I'll be talking in that perspective. So the second thing is how I spend my day at Concordia. We typically do not have much thing on campus. So we go to campus only when we have to study like exams, assignments, projects that we have to do together as a team. We book a library room or we go to any empty rooms in the hall building or the EV building and we start accessing all the buildings that we have. The third thing is courses and credit system. Coming to Concordia's perspective of credit system, a particular master's student should have to complete around 45 credit in order to be, you know, eligible to get his master's degree. Doing more than 45, it's okay, you're welcome. You can do extra courses, that's up to you. So when you get admitted into Concordia, what you have to do is you have to go to the course website. The course the course content page itself has a description of what the course, like exactly the course contains. So every single course has the description so you can get an overview about what you can expect from there. In this perspective, I think Concordia did a very, very, very good job because rather than actually looking at the title, understanding what you can expect from the title is very, very important. There are typically three criteria when we actually started. First is a mandatory courses. We had actually three mandatory courses that we have to definitely take. And the second is selective courses from my department as well as the other department. And the third one, I think we had three of courses from which we can pick up one. And that's like picking up one is mandatory. So these are the three criteria that was led to me as a student from quality systems engineering. The second important thing what you have to do is talk to your seniors. Network a lot on LinkedIn to seniors or students who have been studying your course. There are a lot of Indians studying here in Concordia. So it's easy for Indians to actually reach out to other fellow Indians. If you are a person who's inside Concordia, you know, and who has started his first semester, try to talk to more number of people. The person in your class would have done three to four courses, I mean, three to four semesters. Talk to them what the courses they took. Know whether the professor is doing good or not, what they can expect from the course and how the course would add value to them. The third important thing is if you get two C grade in the complete studies you have to redo the subject that you finally got the c stay focused on your subject like stay focused whenever you have your exams try to 
you know finish off your exams and then get good grades do not redo it because redoing it will actually extend your semester if you're a person who's going to complete your semester so just keep that in your mind try to work hard at least during your exams and i have this basic you know syntax question always which are the course easy here at concordia i mean you can never predict which courses are easy or which courses are hard because it depends on the professor for semester to semester the professor changes the way they teach changes the way they handle changes so not all the courses are easy and not all the courses are tough it depends so this is what typically you can expect in terms of the complete coursework the first would be your assignment one midterm one assignment two midterm two and uh, finals in between you have your projects and finally you have to give your project presentation and your project report so this is how it typically goes okay the most common question i get from students approaching me in linkedin is how many courses can i take you can typically take up to three courses like right now the rules and regulation of the university has been completely changed you definitely have to pick up three courses per term like mandatory it's mandatory okay so three subject is good but if you guys ask me if it's tough to take three subjects remember in undergraduate i have done like six subjects three labs everything together within three months of time taking and complete three course is like a piece of a cake it's actually not that hard so the next important thing that i'm going to talk about is classes at concordia for master's students typically consider you're taking three classes okay three courses every course will have a class for three hours for a single day which means i have three days in a week for a class and three hours every single day you guys are kind of not so much stressed when it comes to master because you have your space your time to do all your work from part time to every single thing you have time the next thing is we just go to classes like we go to classes we attend classes we come back home that's all like that is all there is nobody that just pops up right in front of your face say hey hi how are you that's never gonna happen trust me that's never gonna happen until and then you form a project team and that's the first time a person would come up to your face and say hey hi how are you i'm good at this field i'm good at that field we can form a project team this is because everybody has a group before they come into concordia like the groups typically are roommates or you know the person from their country or from their particular province like state we could say so these group of people always go together is concordia does not have like the downtown campus of concordia does not have a proper campus we don't sit and talk to people we we definitely don't have time for that we finish it and when we step out exactly when we step exactly out of concordia it's a whole new world waiting for you because it's downtown so you definitely forget what's happening around you like friends and everything and you just get into the vibe of downtown so these things that i've told you right now is so far what i know but it may differ for person to person but according to what i know what i've seen with people this is what the exact truth is the next thing is exams exams at concordia some exams are open book and some are mcq and some are problems you do also have long answers so basically expect everything like expect everything for your exams as i previously said it depends on your professor if he wants to give mcq long answer problems anything is possible open books are also possible you can actually take calculators sometimes if the professor is liberal you can have phones on your desk that's fine and uh, i think you also have formula sheet that you can take or a notes paper like you can take notes of your complete course have the paper with you and once the exam is done like you have to attach the paper with it and you have to give it to the professor
The fourth important thing is try to take interactive classes. If you're a person who's like into the shell, like into the shell, who, de who definitely do not talk or do not break out of the shyness world, I would recommend you to take courses from ENCS. There are courses from ENCS that have, you know, communication, innovation, critical thinking. These courses can boost your confidence. These courses actually weigh your performance in the class, your interaction in the class. So you are actually put to that scenario of talking. You can never be quiet. You should talk in order to get marks. So make sure to push yourself to attend those classes. Those classes gives you a lot of insight and those classes trains and motivates you as well. was so last moment for me when I tried to realize and I tried to grab opportunities. When we talked about these things, I'm telling you guys, like, go everywhere, enjoy as much as possible, partying. These are all expectations, but the reality is way more far. With all your part-time money, you can actually go and visit those places. They are very good. You can do everything at your own expenses. If I had not taken this step, I would have definitely regretted the rest of my life.